All right, then on this uh, in this scenario of normalization or in this area, we're looking at the idea of keeping track of a. Um, if you read the scenario, it's looking at the idea we're keeping track of volleyball tournaments, guys. We're keeping track of volleyball tournaments, where they take place, the various results, etc. Now, this can be quite a complicated uh, system over here. Now, generally speaking, as soon as I'm seeing this, I should start uh, looking at what's happening. Now, I actually found a. Do you guys remember that? All right, so what we've got is we've got here. What I would first look at doing is I would first start thinking about uh, the design of this. Originally, orig already, I can already basically look at um, the fact that I've got these two here, which to me look like part of a venue, right? For me, uh, I've got a the winner we could potentially calculate, couldn't we? Because would, we would defer from the score A, score B, team A, team B. These are all technically FKs, aren't they? That's not how I spell FK. That's pretty FK, right? FK! Okay, that wouldn't be an FK. But technically, uh, that would be working with there with math. Match. And then the winner could be a calculated field. A field. Okay, I can't actually technically undo that because I don't know how to do that yet. But I will learn. Um, and actually, um, I've got a device that I should be able to draw on soon. So that should, well, I've got a device. I just took it home because I didn't think I was going to use it here, but now I'm going to use it here. Not the point, though. Um, all right, now if we look here, we go down to a team. Originally, we've already seen, whoa. Okay, I actually do need to clear the screen, don't I? Um, what we got here, originally when we look at these teams idea, now if we're looking at these teams, we can already see, we've got the name of the team, we've got a team ID. So we already know that team A and team B is referring to this team ID here. Does this make sense? So even before we start looking at the question, we just get a feel for the data that's going there. It's quite important. So we look at your players. This is already, we know this is, what, what is this term called? The fact that there's multiple players within one field, it's called a repeated group. So I already can see that this is a repeated group. There's different types of repeated groups. I could have player one, comma, player two, sorry, um, uh, fields, multiple fields for player. But in this case, all the players are put in one field, which means it's a repeated group, which means it can't be in first normal form. Does that make sense? But does the top table have a primary key? Yes, it's got a primary key of match ID. Does this table have a primary key? I'm assuming that this is underlined. I can't see because of the red thing. So I'm just going to ignore it. And you'll see, yeah, so team ID so it's got a primary key, but it's also got repeated groups. And it's got points in. Technically, points could also be calculated, but uh, yeah, it would also potentially be very challenging to always calculate that. Now, we go down to league, and you'll see there in the league itself, um, this has a, 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 what's it called when multiple fields form the, the primary key? It's called a composite. composite key. So we've already identified that. We've got the organizer, organizer contact. And now again, we look at this and we can see that, okay, it's not picking up on multiple screens again. Fun, fun. Um, all screens. Okay, now that means your outcome and your uh, organizer contact, those are dependent on each other. Oh, sorry, Allah. Um, Outcome wasn't dependent on that. Um, the two things that are dependent on the league would be organizer contact and organizer, right? And technically, those two are dependent on each other. The league, um, the outcome is, is what outcome happens. Technically, the points is applicable to outcome. Do you guys get that? Because then you get five points on a win, zero points on a loss, two points on a draw. And the same thing would happen in the, the other ones are more uh, uh, not really directly related. Okay, and the shortcut for this was Control Shift Alt. Yay! Booyah! Getting it down. Now, if we move further down, we go to uh, you suggest that the database is um, redesigned. Da, 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 da. Explain the term data redundancy and substantiate your answer by providing an example from the data in the scenario above. Okay, so how would you answer the term data redundancy? Information that is unnecessary and repeated. Okay. Information that is un... I don't know how to spell unnecessary. Unnecessary. Cool. <laughs> and unnecessarily, uh, unnecessarily repeated. Unnecessarily repeated. Well, about unnecessary on the bicycle. So. Technically, uh, any repeat of data is 
unnecessarily other than I suppose you have to repeat the references you're saying okay this happens but yeah so it's unnecessarily repeat of records oh, yes, within a table <laughs> now so you would have a a mark for control shift T come on I sure it doesn't work in this, in this one that's annoying okay, anyway uh, mark okay and you'd have another one uh, I think it's because now SketchUp is open my shortcut for a tick doesn't work Damn it! Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, where would be an example for one? Or the f here's a, a good example. Organizer and contact is repeated. So, uh, Craig and his phone number. This is just a example. So the example could be worth. Now, depending on uh, if you looked at the actual memo of this, as a the setter of the exam, I would have chosen either to award two marks for the fact that your, your explanation was good or two marks for the fact that you gave a very exact or precise um, explanation. I, I would have chosen where to put that but ideally you would want to be putting uh, as precise as possible on that. Craig and his phone number um, has to be repeatedly entered for every outcome that may occur within the league. So I never tell you that you put me into one of your tests. Okay, I, I, shall, I, shall, I shall try to do that. Now, um, <laughs> I wanted to see everybody's been successful. Alright, now, uh, do you guys follow this? Yeah. Okay, true. now, uh, the next question says list two types of anomalies provided <laughs> an example of each. We went through this in the last one, um, so I'm going to pause the video through here because I don't need to do it again. For a delete. Try to lead one player to lead all the players. Okay. Um, one player left. One player leaves the team. You delete all the players as they are in the same field as a repeated group. Um, I would suggest you just give extra. Um, extra marks on there just because mark mark now obviously max four you would get given two marks for the type of anomalies two marks for the explanations okay so insert would be uh, I wanted to add a player it deleted all other players <coughs> from the team okay that's an insert uh, an update I tried to edit a player's surname who was who got married and uh, then subsequently all other players subsequently all other players just gone bad database design. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. uh, so what is that? Now, um, okay, to follow the following terms, we got the relational database. Now, relational database. What is the definition of a relational database? It wasn't in the notes, but apparently it is a database that deals with relationships between different fields. Okay, so it's where fields. Okay, so a data organization or structural system, data organization system or DBMS which is database management system which uh, we, which tables are related to other tables by use of foreign key fields uh, there are a lot of different definitions for it, but basically what I'm looking for there is the fact that multiple tables can relate to each other through the use of um, uh, relationships or references or whatever. So in this case, I'm trying to be as uh, pretty as possible in my explanation. All right, partial dependency. Uh, dependent on only part of a composite key field. I dot E dot 
parts of a composite key field. Um, uh, then the next one, transistor dependencies dependent on a non-key field. Okay, explain the term foreign key and list all fields in the above database which are an example of this. So, team foreign key refers to a field in another table. Usually the PK field. The oh yeah, you guys are setting up the well remember oh you weren't thinking of that. I was saying we do need to set up the exam accounts, but yeah. In in example uh, team A and team B, team A, comma team B, comma what are, which other ones can we find? Team A, Team B, uh, League, uh, from table, which is this table from? Team A and Team B is from table, match, match, and League from table so you see this leak here is referring to this leak here, does that make sense? so leak from table team from table team uh, do you guys follow that? Yeah. and you understand why Why? Uh, so there would have been a mark per uh, team A one mark, team B one mark uh, leak from table uh, team and the other mark and one mark for the explanation. Um, just quite important there. It's very important to mention which table it's from, because especially here, league and league, there's two fields of the same name in different tables. So just be careful to also mention the table name it's comes from in this scenario. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Ooh, I just didn't bold this. Um, control B. Control B. Control B. Hey, your teacher. IT teacher, which is me, tells you that in the database design, referential integrity cannot be enforced. What is meant by referential integrity? Uh, referential integrity means that uh, the foreign key must refer to data that exists in the table it is relating to. Okay, now it's quite important uh, that referential integrity means that you can't select, for, in this scenario, I couldn't select a team that was not in the, the database or the table teams. So I couldn't refer to, um, if we looked at this scenario, if I got asked to give an example, yeah, we didn't have that many team names down here. But I couldn't refer to team, here team 7, is there. If team 7 was not in table team, I would not be allowed to enter that data. So the database management system itself would uh, prevent any data to be given or to put into this table that didn't exist inside this table. So in any foreign key field, it must refer to something that exists in the other table. You're not allowed to select anything that is not. Sometimes it's, uh, it is um, valid to, um, to do that. Like for example, let's say if you were in a pick and pay uh, till point, you have a smart shopper card. Um, now, that relationship where you are referring to the person who's purchasing it by the shop, smart shopping cart, um, isn't, you don't want to not now sell it to someone because they don't have a smart shopping cart. Whereas macro only wants to sell to people who do have a macro cart. So that's the kind of difference. Enforcing reference integrity will mean that you have to have a macro cart. Not enforcing reference integrity is like you kind of don't have to have a smart shop cart to shop pick and pay. Oh, that was quite a cool reference actually to referential integrity, example wise. But um, <laughs> well, that's the, we'll, we'll see. That's next year. <laughs> Future creation problem. Anyway, um, uh, you guys following this? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that explanation is, is thorough enough. I know it's not included in your notes, but uh, kind of part of the notes is your guys' memos and working through stuff and just general uh, research. You have Google. Alright, um, match. 
state the normal form of each of the following tables and give a reason. Okay, so if we take a look at match, okay, originally I can take a look there, score A, score B, venue, venue address. I originally drawed, this is a foreign, this is a, what you call it, a transitive dependency. Um, it does have a primary key, there's no repeated groups. I'll score A and score B not. Is there, okay, partial dependency is impossible because there's no composite key field, is it? Yeah. So it's impossible to have any uh, partial dependencies, but it does have transitive dependencies. So this first table is in what normal form? No. No, 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 no. okay, let's look, let's look at the rules. Okay, I'm going to open up. I know, but doesn't it have repeated groups, is what I'm asking you. Uh, okay, so first is... No repeat PK. Second, it must be first and no partial. No partial. Okay, second, sorry, third, no second, and no no transitive. <laughs> okay, so now if we look at this, if we look at the first, there's no repeated groups here because. You could argue score A and score B potentially could be uh, argued as being a repeated groups, but then if you did that, you'd have to substantiate that score A and score B is. But technically, those scores are the different teams' score. So it's, uh, I, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. So this is team A's score. This is team B's score. So you could argue that that's a repeated group, and I would probably award you the mark if you argued that. Um, and said that it was in no normal form. However, I would say this is actually in second normal form, and I would say it was in second uh, just purely because uh, second uh, two NF, and the reasons why it has a PK comma no repeated comma uh, no partial, but contains transitive. Okay, that's was where, where, where I would give the marks for. Now, um, a team table, if we now take a look at the team table, immediately looking at it, it has, uh, it has repeated uh, groups, and it's well, guys got a PK. So we'll say here, uh, zero in if, damn it, it has a PK comma, but contains repeated Groups. You guys get that? Okay. Now, league table. If we now take a look at the league table, um, okay, it, this one has partial dependencies because points is dependent on outcome, organizers dependent on <coughs> organizer contact, which is technically a uh, a transitive dependency, but it does have primary key because it's got a composite key, doesn't it? So we would say this is an one in F. It has a PK comma uh, and no repeated groups, <coughs> but contains partial. Can I just say partial? Or you guys know what I mean? That's not how you spell groups. Groups. Okay, so that's that done. Do you guys follow this? Okay, now. Um, control Alt Shift T. Damn it, doesn't work. All right. And um, so the marks should be worked with there. Now it says explain the composite key and provide an example from the. Okay, so composite key field is a field that consists. Sorry, a, a key field that is made up from multiple. Fields. Okay. Now, um, an example in the above would be in table <laughs> league. Uh, league and outcome form a composite 
Okay, control B. Now, um, which field, uh, which of the fields in the database could be derived data winner, points. comma, points, and potentially potentially uh, winner. So winner could be uh, determined, points could be determined. That's it, actually. Yeah, winner and points. So those are the two that could be determined. Now, in, in some ways, I could understand why in some ways you'd want to store points and just keep it updated because uh, sometimes you might want to view the record directly. But you could also calculate that as per and when. Okay, um, you guys happy with that? Um, you, I'm lazy now, but you should also refer to the table that those are. So winner and table, I can't remember. And points in the table, I can't remember. You guys could, you're able to, in your exam, you're able to tear off your scripts. You can tear off the front example of things so you have the database with you too. Does that make sense? So it would make life easier. Right now, I've got to scroll up, which I don't feel like doing. What is meant by a candidate key? Give an example of that. Well, hello. A field that could possibly be used as a primary. A field that is, that can uniquely identify. A record and I dot e dot uh, an example in the above database. So, what could potentially be used as a primary key field here? Were all the primary keys already? <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. That 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 makes this answer tricky. But I, what I could I would say is if I if a organizer was separate, then the co organizer contact would could. Could be a candidate field, or if um, venue was separated, the field venue would be a candidate. Okay, I understand a uh, candidate field. I understand that with the scenario that was given, guys, with the scenario that was given, um, all of the PK fields were already there. Now, and unfortunately, I don't think it's very easy to identify another field that could potentially uniquely identify them because the design is terrible. And you could even arguably say that players would uniquely identify them, but it's a terrible design. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's very difficult to um, to come up with a, a candidate keys here. But in which case, I just was inventive and I said if you separated this into a separate table, which you should have done anyway, um, this would be a candidate key field. So I just had to elaborate to answer it correctly, which isn't the end of the world. I elaborated answered it correctly. Okay, now um, normalize a table into the correct field. So now if we look at match, uh, now th this one's a little bit tricky, but match, uh, we've got the match ID and we've got the venue that's kind of been separated and we need to know where the match happened on there. So arguably I could even just separate this out here into one table and this into another table and then have a linking field. So I could separate this into three tables. That would be the base that you're working from. Some people would have argued that you could even separate team A and team B from here um, to, to do what I was saying with regards to some people who have identified score A and score B as being partial dependency, which does kind of overcomplicate it. But at a metric level, we're kind of trying to keep it simple. And I'll just go, okay, that's one field, that's one table, that's another table, then we need a linking table. To create a many-to-many -many relationship because you need a many-to-many -many relationship because one venue may have many matches and the match okay no a match a match has to be played in one venue it can't, one match can't be over one venue so we don't need a many-to-many -many. we can just do a, a, a one match many well, sorry one venue can have many matches but one match can't have many Friends. venues so therefore it's a one-to-many relationship so I'll put my foreign key in the uh, many side which is a venue can have many matches. Does that make sense? So you put your foreign key on the many side. 
So my matches would have the foreign key of venue. Do you guys get that? So I'll go in and I'll separate that. So literally, um, I'll go down here and I'll say TBL um, match. This would have match ID, comma, team A, comma, team B, comma. Let's go and I'm going to do my venue first, actually, TBL venue. Uh, you don't have to call it TBL. I could just call it venue. Um, I think, uh, I don't know what you guys prefer. Do you prefer just, it's really up to you. Um, there are different naming conventions that people go through, and quite frankly, uh, in a scenario that you could do this in university, just keep to what your lecturer says is the naming convention, or if you're at a company, just keep to what your company's naming conventions. Anyway, um, venue, uh, venue, technically the venue name could be the primary key field, so I remember you may use underscore, uh, you need to underscore your PK field, so in this case I'm going to ignore it so we can actually see our, our underscore, our underline. Uh, so venue name, comma, address. That's only two fields we have for venue, right? Now here, we have match ID would be our primary key, so we would underline that. We would go and override it with the U, underline it. Um, What's that shortcut you just used to bring up that for the one word? It's the one word. I just... Uh, I right-clicked, actually, which is the right-click button next to the control key. Yeah. Okay, now um, team A, team B, and then I would have the venue underscore FK, meaning that it is the foreign key referring to, referring to the venue here. So it would directly refer to my venue name. Does that make sense? So now I've got one venue and have many matches. But one match, <coughs> one match can only have, there's one, one venue, many matches. Okay, do you guys get that? So a match has to take place at one venue, but a venue could have many matches. So we put the foreign key field in that, on that side. Um, are you guys able to sort of identify how to do that? Do you guys follow that? Okay, now if I look at my team, I'll go back to team. Team is over here. Uh, players. Ooh, okay, we need to separate the players out at least. We've got the league that it's in. This is the foreign key field. We've got the points, which can also be derived. So I'm happy for you to leave that out if you said that, okay, it should be derived completely. But we have got a team and league, and we've got team ID. So basically, we're just trying to uh, just establish the players separately. Now, here's a, a logical conundrum-ish. Um, a team can have many players, but can a player participate in many teams? Um, well, it depends on the league rules, because, for example, it might be that uh, you're only allowed to compete in a league, or in a, in a league for one team, you're not allowed to compete. For example, if you go to volleyball, if you play for under-19 boys, you're not allowed to play for under-16 boys, even if you are under-16, you've got to choose which team you play for, you're not allowed to switch between them and play double fixtures. Does that kind of make sense? The, the, the Often leagues will not allow that. So I kind of would... Uh, in the scenario, it didn't stipulate um, those kind of things, whether you were only allowed to play for one team or not. It didn't stipulate. So I would have been lenient and I would have marked either or correctly. If you chose to create a many-to-many -many relationship, so a team, but then you'd have to have a linking table. Um, I want to show you both scenarios or both, both solutions for this, but the main thing that we're trying to separate here is just the players. Um, so what we would do is... The, the way I, I would have done it, because I would assume that one player could only play for a player could only play for one team, so it would be one team could have many players, but one player would only have one team. So it's a one-to-many relationship, not a many-to-many. -many. So if we were wanting to create a one-to-many, I would answer the following. I would say we've got a team, open brackets, which should have the team... Uh, what was it, Tiana? This was the team ID... Team ID, comma, uh, name, team name, comma, league. Now, you guys could choose to also make it a composite key with there, but yeah, and that would be it. And then you'd have a player, which would have player ID, comma, first. Why did I separate this? Because now, currently, the name field is what is not atomic. What does atomic mean? Cannot be broken down into any more 
Okay, Tommy means it's, it's at its most simplistic form of data. Surname, and then I'd have here um, team underscore fk. You could also maybe have other details for this player, but that's fine. Because that's all that we put in the scenario. And the primary key fields, I would not get a mark because I did not underline this. Even if I call it ID, it doesn't mean I've identified it as the primary key. You have to underline it to show that that is going to be the primary key. Now, if I wanted to a many to many relationship, I would have answered it as follows. Team, open brackets, team, ID, comma, team, name, comma, league. I would have then also had um, player, open brackets, player, ID, comma, first, comma, surname. And then I would have had here a relational table, so I would call it link. I'm just going to call it link. And then I would have here team fk, comma, player, underscore fk. Um, guys, quiet. Does this make sense, what I've done here? So now, one, oops, one team, and I'm going to make this a composite key field because this is a link here, so both of them combined would be unique. And then here, that would be the primary key. Um, do you guys follow? You actually don't even have to highlight it, by the way. You can just be in it. And then right click and uh, right click button. Okay, now, do you guys see what I've done there? As in the bottom table or the bottom example, I've done a many to many relationship or one player can play for many teams, many teams. Yes, go. Um, and so forth. So there's two different alternatives there. Both I would have given full marks for because I didn't stipulate whether a, a, a player could only play for one team. Does that make sense? Though potentially it would be a problem if there's, there's a player plays for two teams and then they face each other. <laughs> but yeah. Um, now a league, league is the next step. Now uh, this table for the five minutes. I got this. Uh, you guys need to start logging on. Though. I'll just finish this in the video. No, the do it, do it, so okay, so the organizer, the organizer needs to separate. Is it ten minutes left for this? Okay. Yeah, the or organizer uh, is separated. We need to separate the league and the outcome. Technically, the outcome are the same for both leagues. Uh, so I could potentially separate the outcome and I could separate the organizer. So technically, I would separate this into three tables. I would have the now, my um, Craig, for example, might organize for more than one league. But one league will only have one organizer, or would you allow one to have a many to me now? Both the exact same scenario as previously discussed. Not enough information was given in the scenario to dictate whether a league is only organized by one person or if a league can be organized by many per people. But uh, or whether an organizer only organizes one league or whatnot. None of that information was given. But as long as you separated it out so that it would logically link, because an organizer would obviously be separate, and the outcome is separate. So in this case, I'm just going to say one league is organized by an organizer, but an organizer might organize many leagues. That's the way I have interpreted it. Do you guys follow you could have interpreted it however you want to, but that's the general speaking I think is most logical in this scenario. Now, in the case of the league, you would say, um, so we got a league table. We know we got that. We know we need an organizer table, and we know we need an outcome table. So now, in my outcome table, it's a um, the outcome. So it's outcome, which will be the primary key, and then points. Right? That's all that's needed there. Technically, that could be a, a separate, because it's the same for any league, I don't even think that needs to be linked to anything. That could be a separate entity, and when you just go and look at the outcome table, okay. One, cool. Which one works? So, I, technically, I don't even know if I need a foreign key referring to that. Uh, organizer, we had organizer name, but I didn't like that as the primary key, comma, and then I'd have first name, comma, surname. I also wouldn't have the, the, the scenario didn't put a full name in there, so we could have just had name there because it didn't give, show you the full name. 
And then the other one was contact, right? Yep. And then we would have Lee, which would then have um, Lee, <coughs> comma, organizer, FK. So that would just have a foreign key um, referring to who's organizing this league. Cool. Um, and that would have been okay to have that up. I'm also happy for uh, you to have. Um, I'm also happy for you to have uh, uh, worked with, with a slightly different solution. There are different solutions to this, and as I say, this assumes a couple of things. I assume that one league, a league, only has one organizer, and I kind of assume that the outcome points doesn't need to be directly referred to because the outcome points are the same for any league, and it would actually be the. It could potentially, if anything, it could be this that would then or in your table itself, or in your program itself, you could just refer to, okay, when, what points does it get? Cool. And that's assuming that all leagues work with the exact same outcome. Um, or point system. Uh, if the leagues were working with different point system, you could potentially make it a, a composite key field there. The next question was here, it asked you to draw up a data dependency diagram for that table, and this has to do with the coaches. So, I'm going to use sketch it for this. In this case, First name, surname, sol, all ref and team coached, technically, well, that would be a foreign key field. But all those fields refer to, why are you not working, Mr. Um, Fancy Pants? Oh, there we go. Okay, so sol, all of these fields, including the team coach, can refer to that. Top uh, refers to the date of the pay, refers to technically the coach again. And these would be uh, partial, partial, and so would this be partial. Pretty much. Um, the cell surname, team coach, that would be an FK field, so I might even indicate the FK to be referring to which team that person is coaching. The date, uh, type, we'll be working that. Uh, pay would refer to the. Um, ooh, actually, I, I take it back a little. Um, I kind of don't like this relationship here because technically the pay has got its own sort of transitive dependencies because technically the pay is dependent on a couple of things. It depends on the type of type it is, if it's tournament or whatever. You can see that there is that. So the, technically, all of them look like it's the exact same. All coaches get the same in this database. So technically, this is a transitive dependency because pay is then responsible to top because all practices are 200, all tournaments are 400 for all of them that I've seen down here. So this would then be a transitive dependency. Tron you write that in. You don't use dotted lines or anything. Um, you, you, as long as the link is shown, you've indicated somehow how to transfer dependency or partial dependency, it's fine. But you do need to indicate clearly that that's the story scenario. Do you guys get that? Okay. Um, video is going to end now. It's a 38-minute video. Yo. Okay, bye.